What's up, Writing Workshop? You guys get glasses hand tack today for day two of Writing Workshop. From what I've seen so far from day one, things are going great, so keep up the good work. Um, you should know that, um, I wonder if I can show this real quick. You should know that as you complete those writing surveys, that I am collecting intel on you. I'm looking for those things that you enjoy about writing and do well. I'm looking for those things that you know you need work on. I'm just collecting that information so I can best help you in a, in a writing workshop. I'll show that real quick here. I've got my Word document. I haven't finished grading the ones from, from my first hour class just yet, but I am collecting intel just so I can get to know you better and so that I can um, so I can know how I can best serve you in this course. I also want to note right now um, that we will occasionally have um, virtual lessons where we'll have two video components like one one focused on writing, one focused on grammar. Um, it just so happens that the ones we've done so far just have one longer video and then time to write as well. So just keep your eye out for that in future lessons. Today is going to be one of those days that just has a single longer video and then some time for you to, to get writing as well. Before we look at our lesson agenda, I hope you had a chance to do your first journal entry, but I do want to walk through um, just some details about journal entries before we move on here. I'll click into it real quick. While we're virtual, our journal entries are going to be uh, Schoology discussions. And normally, when we write journals in class anyway, um, we I build in some time to discuss what people write or give people a chance to share what they've written anyway. So it's not all that different necessarily. But I do want to walk through some of the logistics of journals for us. Um, in order to keep accurate attendance during virtual learning, I'm sure you know this by now, I do need to be able to see small amounts of your work on a regular basis rather than just seeing four essays all semester and nothing else. Um, luckily, journaling is something we do every day in writing workshop anyway. Even if we were in class right now, we would be journaling to start this lesson. Um, each of these journal entries, I'm just going to grade as a three-point completion grade. Um, it's really just based on how complete your paragraph is. So if you hit that four to five sentence minimum, you get your three out of three. Um, maybe you're a little bit short, I might give that a two. If it's really, really lazy, I might give you a one. So every two to three weeks, I will give you a chance to revise and edit um, to, to choose one of your past journal entries that I'll grade on a deeper level, grade it out of 10 points instead. That just gives me a chance to, to give you good feedback on journals without drowning in journal entries to grade. I figure if I grade one journal entry for each student every couple of weeks and your better journal entries at that, that allows us to get some good dialogue on what's going well and what's not going so well for you in writing. Um, our first one of those is coming next Friday. I'll walk you through the process for identifying which journal entry you want me to um, you want me to take another look at once we get there. For our first journal entry, if you haven't done this yet, this is just a, a chance to work through some logistics on on uh, splitting up into groups for writing. I am looking to set up small groups um, both between both my first and second hour class for now, uh, just to meet me once a week on Microsoft Teams. Um, and so this journal entry is so we can start collecting times that work. Please write about a day, Monday through Thursday. We'll try to leave Fridays open for you guys to, to work in all eight of your classes. And a time frame, just a one or a one to two hour block, somewhere between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. That works well for you. Um, you can give multiple days and, and time frames. So if your schedule is really, really open, um, talk, give, give multiple options because that will help me when it comes to assembling these groups. Don't worry about that one to two hour big block. I'm only asking for you to give those big uh, blocks to give me some flexibility with planning times. The actual meetings and teams I'm going to keep short, like 15 to 30 minutes, just a chance for us to um, to get together to talk about how things are going and to give you guys a chance to collaborate um, if you need to bounce ideas back and forth, especially for bigger essay assignments. Again, those longer time ranges that I'm asking for are simply to give me an idea of when you're available and so that I can be flexible. So like if you say that you're available from 8 to 10 a.m., right, I might put you, I could put you in a group that meets from 8 to 8.30 and then have a different group that meets from 8.30 to 9 o'clock, for instance. Um, it's not like I'm asking you to stay there from 8 to 10 a.m. It's just for the, uh, for the sake of flexibility so I can get that started. I hope to have these writing groups assembled by Labor Day, which is September 7th. I'm sort of assuming at this point that we'll be still virtual by that point. But if we are back in the classroom um, after I get these groups set the first time, we may just need to reset them once we're back in, once we're back in class. A couple of notes on Schoology discussions. First of all, I've left one that you should be able to see and use as a model if you need right here. 
for what a discussion paragraph might look like. Um, but a few little uh, notes on discussions. Schoology discussions don't save themselves if you close the page before submitting. Um, that's especially tragic if you have some kind of technology issue, right? So if your Wi-Fi goes out or if your power goes out, whatever might happen, right? Um, that discussion is not going to save itself. So if you can't write a journal entry in one sitting, maybe you only have five minutes and you're not sure if you'll finish in five minutes, what I recommend doing is writing it in Microsoft Word and then copy pasting it just at your on your own time. Uh, Microsoft Word does autosave, so you don't have to worry about losing your work if you type it in Word first. Another little note on discussions. Your classmates will be able to see what you write in Schoology discussions. This is great for assignments where I actually want you guys to, um, to get into a written dialogue about a specific topic. For journals, I'm not going to require that for a grade. So you, um, you're allowed to leave constructive comments on each other's entries. Keyword is constructive. So if you're going to disagree or if you're going to critique someone's writing, be sure to do it respectfully. Um, but this is not a requirement for these journal entries. You're not being graded based on your commenting on classmates' posts. There will be a couple of larger discussions throughout the semester where I do expect you to comment, but not for these journal entries. So again, if you haven't done this yet, please work through that. I am going to comb through these discussions over the course of next week and try to get some writing groups, um, some group meeting times assembled in Microsoft Teams. We'll walk through our agenda real quickly and get started on notes here too. So our objective for today is that you guys can all follow each step of the writing process. The key word is process. Um, that is an area of writing that um, a lot of people struggle with. Even, even college students and adults struggle with, with treating writing as a process. And a lot of our issues with writing can be solved simply from internalizing that process. Um, so what we're doing right now is watching through writing process notes. We'll actually get to our notes in just a moment. By the way, um, I don't have a note sheet or anything for you to fill out. So what I recommend doing is maybe grabbing a, a piece of paper, maybe something you can turn into a poster for your bedroom, um, something like that. It can be an eight and a half by 11 regular piece of printer paper um, because you will be able to um, learn the writing process, maybe even draw it and describe it today as we walk through this. This video is also gonna cover assignment directions. So we are starting our first very itty bitty tiny short essay today. Um, and I'll walk through directions at the end of this video too. For Monday, I want you to, to do the outlining for, um, for our essay assignment. We'll walk through that outline together once again. And then what's coming up next week is simply time to write that essay. So don't feel like you have to crank out an entire essay this weekend. You can certainly, you can certainly work that way if you want. I'm not going to stop you um, from working at your own pace. But please know, all I'm looking for over this weekend is an outline. And it doesn't even have to be a long outline. Let's get it. Writing process notes. The following video, which you're watching right now, walks through the image below as well as the attached prompt. Let's learn how the writing process works. So this image right here is my favorite image for showing how writing is a process. You'll notice that there are four steps in the process. It's PDEP, P-D-E-P. -E There's pre-writing, then drafting, then editing, then publishing. Um, let me suggest to you here that a lot of people will tell you that writing is difficult or struggle with writing because they think writing is just one step, right? You take an idea and you write it and you're done. Um, when you take that approach, or when people take that approach, there are two big things they really complain about. One is that they run out of ideas as they're writing. That's without that pre-writing uh, part that we'll talk about in just a moment here. Or conversely, they write, they write out their ideas. So they took an idea, they put it on paper, they're done they realize at the end that their ideas aren't all that great or they're hard to read. That's where that editing and publishing part really comes in. So a lot of people think that writing is just drafting, that, that purple step right there. But once we add in the other three steps, I think you'll find writing a lot more tenable, a lot more doable of a process. And part of the goal of this class is to build your confidence as a writer. I would suggest to you, and I, I can vouch for this in my, own, in my own writing career, starting in high school, moving through college into now, um, Treating writing as a process has not only made me feel more comfortable and confident as a writer, but it's made me a better writer all around, too. I should tell you that as a high school student, I really struggled with writing until my junior year, until I had a teacher who really made writing click for me, um, and a lot of that has to do with this process, or a similar process. First step in the writing process is pre-writing. Key prefix there is pre, which means before. 
Um, there are things that you should do, it's a planning process, before you write anything for a specific assignment. Um, this graphic gives us some ideas on what to do in pre-writing. You can identify your audience. So for instance, when we're writing our research paper later this uh, semester, identifying your audience um, and being able to connect with them will help you, especially with your introduction. Defining purpose will help with your thesis writing. Thinking, discussing, gathering ideas, reading, annotating, that's research, which we'll practice as well later on. Free writing, and the biggest one for us, outlining. Um, planning is a step of writing that not a whole lot of people maybe think about a lot, and it's, it's certainly one that not everyone enjoys as well. Um, but pre-writing and, and the strategies that I'll teach you with pre-writing is really, really helpful for making sure that you can take um, an essay prompt and actually attack it from the right angle. We should also note that each of our major assignments this semester, so college application essay, research paper, uh, creative analysis essay, and your final project, follow each step of this process in depth. So we'll work through the whole process for our college application essay, but the big, big, big focus early in the semester is pre-writing. How do you plan out this essay and how do you attack your plan? You'll get some practice with, it, with outlining this weekend, obviously. The second step is drafting. And what I love, love, love about this graphic is that it shows drafting as a loop. Notice that pre-writing is one step. You pre-write and you're done. Drafting is a loop that you might go through multiple times. You might, I'll use our research paper as an example again, right? Our research paper is large enough that you're, you're going to write at least two drafts of it, right? Um, I'm going to be grading a rough draft or a first draft and a final draft for that essay, but you might write three separate drafts of that thing before you're ready, right? Notice that drafting, now first of all, we should note drafting is writing itself. Um, you're sequencing your ideas, you're organizing your paragraphs, you're rethinking, you're supporting evidence within your essay. We'll cover evidence in a bit here. Um, you're checking your word choice, you're continually working towards your audience and purpose. But notice that drafting is a process of writing something, that's what this curve is right here, reviewing it. You could self-proofread or you can peer review. I'm an, I'm an excellent peer for peer review, so if you give me a draft early enough, I am happy to proofread it for you and give feedback. And then you revise it. You take feedback from, from yourself, from other proofreaders, from teachers, and you make changes. And you make changes and write again, and you make changes and write again, and you make changes and write again, until you're comfortable with the content of your essay. Some people confuse revising and editing. Think of it this way. Revising deals with ideas. So if someone's reading your essay and they say, hey man, or lady, paragraph three is really hard to understand. That's a revising process, right? You take a look at paragraph three, you say, wow, this is messy. And then you fix it from there, right? Editing is more to do with grammar. So maybe your ideas are working well, the structure of your essay, the organization is looking great. Editing wise is just taking a look at individual grammatical errors and fixing those. The meaning of your essay is still intact, but it's the readability of it through grammar that needs work. Our research paper is gonna be our big drafting one once again. It's our largest one, so we'll work through at least two different drafts of that essay. Editing is the next step. So like I said, uh, revising has to do with changing ideas and making fixes to ideas. Editing is making fixes to language, um, working through grammar, punctuation, spelling, formatting, uh, in fixing citations and research, doing works cited page for research. These are things that we would want to double check and fix in that editing process. You should know, um, grammar wise, we're gonna be working through grammar on a week by week basis throughout this semester. Um, once we get to the end of our creative analysis essay, we're gonna be done with new grammar concepts. So the big focus on that essay is editing. You'll probably find that essay easier to write content wise but at that point in the semester, I'm looking for this close to perfection uh, editing-wise. So we'll spend some time doing proofreading, peer reviewing, editing, um, fixing up grammar before the final draft of that one's due. The last step of the writing process is publishing. Um, now, pu maybe the first thing you think of with publishing is like printing off a book, right? That's what I think of when I think of publishing. In the writing process, at least for like written essays in high school and college, Publishing is about making sure that everything is pretty um, before you finish it off. So it does have to do with formatting. It's making sure that your um, your essay or your assignment matches the prompt. But it's also about knowing just what an, what an in-class essay should look like at the end. Um, how to submit um, an essay online and, and what are some of those little formatting things you need to know. 
I don't know Rider's Inc. what that is. I, just, I stole this graphic off the internet, so um, you can ignore that last little bit there. Our focus with publishing is going to be our final project, which is a resume, cover letter, and mock interview. And that is the absolute perfect assignment for practicing publishing. Because if you think about um, if you think about going in for a job interview and you hand them your resume, or they've seen your resume already, um, how your resume looks matters immensely. And that for a, for a lot of employers, that's kind of how they divide. Or that's kind of how they they separate who's going to get an interview and who doesn't. So. We're going to focus a lot on um, what resumes should look like, not just content-wise, but visually, as well as cover letters, too. It's kind of a perfect opportunity to practice that. Once again, um, I think this is a great graphic to put up on a wall somewhere, put it in a binder, put it somewhere where you'll see it, because this is a, I think we need frequent reminders that writing is a process and not a one-time thing. Um, and having this as a visual reminder for you I think will serve you well throughout the semester. So feel free to pause this video here. Feel free to draw this, write this out, do whatever you need to help you internalize this process because we're going to be working through it all semester. Like I said, we're going to work through it in small ways. Um, these first couple, or this with this first uh, essay assignment we'll look at here, we'll, we'll kind of zoom through the entire process. But then with each major assignment, we're going to uh, do a special focus on each of these things. Let's look at this assignment together. Who I am essay prompt. Um, Schoology does have this view button that allows you to um, view assignments in-house. That's what I'm going to do in a moment here. If you'd like to download or print the document, you can just click on the document title here and it'll open it up in Microsoft Word for you. I'm just going to click view. So I want to see you work through the entire writing process. And so I wanted to give you kind of a free form essay prompt that allows you to do that. Let's read through this prompt together, and then I'll give you some guidance on outlining for this weekend. The first weeks of school are a great opportunity to show me how you write. Um, really, the purpose of this essay is so that I can see a writing sample early in the semester and give you some really early feedback on what's going well and what you can work on moving forward. Rather than give you some cliche, what I did last summer prompt, because those are bogus, I have decided to open this one up a bit. In a creative essay, that is a, a key word there, creative, you've got, some, you've got some freedom in how you write this essay. Please discuss one aspect of your identity that you value. I know there are some buzzwords in that sentence. I'll get there in a moment. Some examples of identity aspects could be your faith background. Maybe, maybe um, it has to do with Christianity. Maybe it's a, a specific denomination like Lutheranism, or, uh, or maybe you go to a Baptist church, whatever it might be. Your ethnicity, ethnicity or culture. A little note there on ethnicity and culture. Ethnicity is more or less defined off of physical characteristics and where your um, heritage is found geographically. Culture has more to do with the practices of the people group that, that, you, um, that you hail from. So my ethnicity technically is Caucasian. If we want to look at that in depth, I come from, um, or my ancestors come more from like Germany, the Czech Republic, maybe France, those kinds of areas. Culture would be defined more by those people groups themselves. So um, obviously there, there are aspects of culture that we might identify as, as quote unquote white culture. Um, but there are certainly, even within my extended family, some, some very German practices, for instance, that we do. I don't necessarily draw a whole lot of my, my identity values from my specific culture, so to speak. Maybe, um, maybe you really find a lot of your identity in your relationships. Maybe you've got a, rela a good relationship with one of your parents. Or maybe you've got a sibling who's your best friend in the world, or maybe you have a lot of cousins. Maybe you're the oldest out of a bunch of, out of a bunch of siblings, and so you draw a lot of your identity from being the older brother or older sister. Just an example there. Uh, your accomplishments. Maybe there's something you can do. Maybe you have a special skill or talent that you really highly value, and that's that's come to define your identity. Skills are right there as well. So maybe accomplishments could be something rare that you've done. Skills may be something rare or a talent that you can do that not many other people have. Those are just some ideas. To give you a better idea of um, how you might start an essay like this, here are some sample thesis statements. I might say something like this for my own essay. And mind you, these are real statements about me. Um, I could probably write a short essay about each of these topics. In fact, I know I could write a short essay about each of these topics. I just want you to see, get some ideas on how you might frame an essay like this. Mind you, thesis statements go at the end of your introduction. This is what I would use to center my entire essay. Peep this. I have been a Christian for the last 13 years, and I'm learning more about God every day. 
So there I'm looking at my faith background there. That's a true statement. Um, I, I became a Christian in high school, like I told you guys. Um, and my essay is probably going to focus quite a bit about how I'm growing within that Christian faith that, that I highly value in my own life. Another one. My name is Ben Hantak. Yes, my first name is Ben. My name is Ben Hantak, and I'm a German speaker. Notice that that one's really concise, but the way I wrote it makes it interesting. You can tell from this thesis that I'm going to write my essay about uh, my special talent of being able to speak German, right? And I'm going to talk about why that's valuable to me. A third one. I love living in Milwaukee, but I'm a St. Louisan through and through. I didn't put, uh, like, hometown somewhere in there. Maybe that's a cultural kind of thing, because St. Louis kind of has its own little mini culture. Um, but as you can tell from that one, I'm going to talk about my identity as someone from St. Louis. Um, there, there are things that are very St. Louis about me, from the sports teams I like to some of the foods that I eat. St. Louis-style pizza is, a, is one that's a very interesting one that I could talk about for hours and hours and won't bore you with now. Um, but notice that that one is talking more about my, my geographic identity or cultural identity. Or maybe a relationship one, right? Many know me as a teacher. However, I'm a husband and father first. Obviously, here I'm going to talk about how I find my identity in my relationship with my wife and my two daughters. Again, these are just examples. You can be creative with your own prompt. Um, I, in fact, I highly encourage you to, to sit and think and free write on this one a little bit before you identify that one aspect that you want to talk about in your essay. Um, I'm going to demonstrate form, formatting later. I'm actually going to demonstrate drafting first, early next week, and then we'll look at things like uh, formatting and editing and stuff later next week. But just a couple of little details. Once you're ready to start typing, your essay must be typed in 12-point Times New Roman font or similar, Calibri 11, Arial 12. They're all similar. Just be careful. Your essay must... Yeah, double-spaced. Did I include that? Oh, it's later on. Your essay must have three paragraphs, so an introduction, a body, and a conclusion. Please don't go any crazier than that this early in the semester. And it must be one to two pages long, double-spaced. So... Um, again, fairly short. I don't want to. I don't want to go too nuts early on in the semester. I just need some writing that I can give feedback on. The rest of that is all up to your creativity. So, creative title is up to you. Um, I do want you to use an MLA heading. I'll demonstrate that next week anyway. I'm going to grade this essay out of 20 points. Um, you can see the breakdown in the rubric below. Um, again, just keeping it short to begin the semester. We will submit these essays to turnin.com through Schoology. I'll show that uh, late next week anyway. This, uh, the, all the, the drafts of this essay are going to be due by September 4th. But if you submit yours earlier than that, I'm going to try to get to them earlier um, so that I don't overload myself with grading over weekends as well. Real quickly, how I'm grading this thing. So length and structure is one of those things. I want to see that you can develop an idea um, long enough in an essay. Um, that's one of the first things I'm looking for. So do you know how to write an introduction, body, conclusion? Can you reach one to two pages in length? I certainly hope you can when writing about yourself. Essay shows a strong creative effort. I know that is uh, very loose and open. That is one that I rarely give anything less than a four or a five on. I'm just looking that you are, um, that you're giving your all on this essay and that you're being creative and having fun with it. Essay stays focused from introduction to conclusion. Some of you, some of you so far have identified focus as something to work on. Um, so I do want to see how you can take a thesis statement, prove it in the body of your essay, and wrap it up in your conclusion, um, and staying on topic the entire time. And then lastly is spelling and grammar. Notice the word minimal right there. Um, this early in the semester, I'm not necessarily expecting perfection, but I am looking to see that you have a basic grasp on how spelling and grammar works. Again, I'm going to give feedback on those areas that you need to work on as I grade these things. Let's talk outlining before um, I set you guys free to do some writing here. Um, the first step in the writing process, like we talked about, is pre-writing. It's planning. Um, maybe some of you are tempted to take that prompt and just start writing about yourself, right? There, there are people who are like that, where they're just like, planning, schmanning, I'm just going to get writing on this thing. You might be able to pull it off. You might not. Um, I can tell you that, that it hurts uh, starting to write an essay and then running out of ideas halfway through and having to go back to square one. So I do want to see that you guys can walk through the outlining process together. The big, big, big thing I'll say right now is that outlines do not need to be in complete sentences. So um, I, know it's, I know it's kind of tricky that I had to assign something over a weekend here. 
but please, please, please note that you don't have to go ham on this outline, so to speak, right? Um, I just wanted to give you guys a space where you can plan out your ideas, whether you are planning out your ideas three words at a time, or whether you're doing it in complete sentences. It should be noted that if you do outline in complete sentences, it saves you time later on down the road, because when you're typing your essay, you can use those complete sentences, but you don't have to write in complete sentences. My formatting here got messed up because I'm in view mode right here, but um, when you're doing this through um, our OneDrive assignment, you've got all the space in the world to type. So don't be afraid to take this into multiple pages. Um, I'm just going to be grading through the outline and checking to see that everything's there anyway. So this is kind of a review on how essays are structured, um, your introduction, plan out, and attention getter. Um, again, this can be a complete sentence or two. It could just be a couple of words to give you an idea, right? Let's say I'm writing the German essay, right? My thesis is, my name is Ben Hantek, and I'm a German speaker, right? What I might write in for my attention getter is, I might say, um, write a funny phrase in German, right? I don't even have to choose what phrase that is just yet. I would probably use Das Leben ist kein Ponyhof anyway. Uh, life is no pony farm. It's basically a German way of saying life's not fair. Um, that's a good way to start an essay, right? But I don't even necessarily have to decide on which phrase I'm going to use right now but I can write that in as an idea for later. One to three background sentences. Um, background sentences are for giving your uh, reader some background um, about your topic before you launch into your thesis. If I'm gonna talk about my, st my status as a German speaker or my identity as a German speaker, I'm probably gonna explain um, within those background sentences how I learned German, right? I might say, um, I started learning German as a freshman in high school and it really clicked for me. I ended up studying it and I ended up majoring in it in college, and today I can um, and today I can still retain a lot of what I learned back then. Um, I can still think, read, write, speak, and listen in German. And then my thesis statement, which I've already written, I'll just jot that again right here. For the body, notice that I left this little um, key code right here: repeat evidence commentary process until you've completed your ideas. Um, I just gave two pieces of evidence because I think it's a magic number for that one to two page um, kind of length on this essay, but you can add more as you like. Remember that body or body paragraphs start with a topic sentence. So here I'm just going to set up my paragraph talking about um, how I can speak German. It might feel a little bit repetitive, but that's okay. For evidence, I'm going to talk about maybe the first um, example of, of why speaking German is valuable for me. Maybe I'll talk about how it's made me, maybe I'll talk about how that's opened up opportunities for me, right? Opportunities to see the world, opportunities to, uh, to teach different subjects, opportunities to meet interesting people, right? Well, there, in my commentary sentences, I'm going to want at least two sentences to explain why that, el that evidence is relevant, right? So um, I'm going to talk, I'm going to say German is valuable to me because is my evidence, basically. Then in my commentary, I can elaborate on that. Notice there's an optional third sentence right there. Those things in parentheses are optional. You can fill them in if you like. If you feel you need that space, you can leave them blank if you like. Please note, once again, these don't have to be complete sentences just yet. This is just to give you an idea of, where you, of how you want to proceed. Do the same thing for evidence too. Maybe my second piece of evidence with German um, is how learning German has helped me with other subjects too. I, I'm a better English speaker and English teacher because I learned a foreign language, right? Um, I'm able to think a little more quickly because I know a second language and I've, I've taught my brain to code switch, right? I can, t I can talk about those examples about how German has bettered my life in that second piece of evidence. And then again, I'm elaborating in my commentary. If I want to add more evidence, I can. I can go on to the next line and type in evidence three, evidence four, however much, however much longer I want to make this essay. But that is up to you at that point. I do want to see that you have at least two pieces of evidence and at least four commentary sentences just to, to get you off to a good start. Last part of an essay is your conclusion. Um, your conclusion starts with a restated thesis. So take your thesis statement from your introduction and either state it in different words or different word order to keep it interesting for your reader. I might say something like, um, I might say something as simple as, I know how to speak German or um, I've, I've learned how to speak and understand German, something like that. A couple of summary sentences. For what I honestly do when I'm outlining is I'll just write like one summary sentence for one piece of evidence, another summary sentence for another piece of evidence, and keep it simple like that. 
Again, these don't have to be complete sentences just yet. Just give yourself an idea on how you're moving forward. And then your final thought. This is the most creative and sometimes the most difficult sentence of an essay to come up with. You want to leave your readers with something interesting or something further either to think or something further to do. Since this essay is about you, it's probably going to be something further to think, right? Um, so in my German essay, I might make a recommendation that everyone should learn a foreign language because it shaped my life for the better. Or I might leave a, a final note um, discussing about um, what my future is going to look like because I can speak German now. You can get creative with that final thought, but you want to make sure that it, that, that, uh, that that sentence has quite a bit of pop to it. Um, generally, when we're in a conversation or when we're reading something, we remember best what we heard or read first and what we heard or read last. So that first thing, attention getter once again, that last thing is a final thought. So summarize your thoughts in a way that's interesting and in a way that's going to keep your reader thinking or acting. I've blabbered quite a bit here. I want to give you guys some time to write. Let me go back here a little bit. Back to day two. You'll notice that your um, essay outline assignment is another um, OneDrive assignment. So simply click on the assignment here. It is the same exact prompt we just looked through, but now this time you can actually fill out the outline in there. Um, please let me know if you're having issues accessing these assignments. I mean, we did a little bit of troubleshooting in day one um, just to make sure that everything works. Um, I do need to know pretty quickly if something's not working for the benefit of the entire class. I forgot to pray earlier. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you so much for um, this writing workshop class. I'm really pleased with how day one has been going so far, and I pray that we can have some fun with day two, especially as students have a chance to write about themselves. Um, I pray that each and every student, as um, he or she works on this essay, will come to know himself or herself better, and as a result will come to know um, you better too, and know how you um, have shaped us, how we are truly um, fearfully and wonderfully made, um, and how you have poured out aspects of yourself into us. Um, help us to, to get to know you better by getting to know ourselves better. And help us to, to lead lives that will not just make this world a better place, um, but will draw people toward heaven as well. We love you, Jesus. We pray this all in your name. Amen. Happy writing. Um, again, feel free to reach out to me if you're having issues um, with the, the outline at all. I'm going to start cranking through outlines and giving some feedback um, as early as Monday morning.